This is a fan-generated show. If you would like to support us, please go to jamieglazov.com and also don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. All your support is greatly appreciated. Robert Spencer here for Jihad Watch and the Glazov Gang. And it is Ramadan. So happy Ramadan, everyone. Ramadan Mubarak, a blessed Ramadan to you. Uh, Barack Obama is very happy that it's Ramadan. He issued a uh, statement saying that for many, this month is an opportunity to focus on reflection and spiritual growth, forgiveness, patience and resilience, compassion for those less fortunate, and unity across communities. Those are beautiful things, beautiful things, really. And that is what Barack Obama says that Ramadan is all about. Now, the funny thing, the odd cognitive dissonance here is that there is a Muslim, a spokesman for the Islamic State, Abu Muhammad al-Adnani. Now, of course, Barack Obama would say he's not a real Muslim, but he called on Muslims to use this Ramadan to, and I quote, get prepared, be ready to make it a month of calamity everywhere for non-believers, especially for the fighters and supporters of the caliphate in Europe and America. Now, this is very strange. If you think about this, why is it that on the one hand, the entire Western intelligentsia, the political and the media elites treat Ramadan as if it were the 100% analogy of Christian Lent and a time therefore of fasting, of spiritual, uh, deepening one's spiritual commitment and so on and prayer and rededication to God. And then on the other hand, there are Muslims who believe and who say straight out that Ramadan is a time for warfare and killing. I mean, this is one thing we have to say, that this is where the analogy breaks down. There aren't any Christians, whenever Lent rolls around, who say Lent is a time to make it a month of calamity, a time of calamity everywhere for non-Christians, especially for the fighters and supporters of the church in Europe and America. We never hear Christians talking that way at Lent or any other time. Uh, it's a strange disjunction, and it raises the question, is Ramadan really just a Muslim Lent, a time of fasting, spiritual reflection, and prayer, or is it a month of calamity for unbelievers? And actually, the answer is, it's both. And the reason why it's both is because it is a time for deepening one's commitment to Allah. Uh, the Quran, if you have your Quran with you, you can open it to uh, chapter 2, verse 185. The month of Ramadan, in which was revealed the Quran, a guidance for mankind and clear proofs for the guidance and the criterion. So whoever of you cites the crescent on the first night of the month of Ramadan, he must observe fasting that month. And whoever is ill or on a journey, the same number from other days. That is, you have to make up the Ramadan fast at other times. Allah intends for you ease. He does not want to make things difficult for you. Now, what are you doing when you're fasting? You are renewing your dedication to Allah. And so how does one renew one's dedication to Allah? Well, it's useful to answer that question by looking at also other verses of the Quran. And we have, for example, chapter 48, verse 29. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And those with him are severe against disbelievers and merciful among themselves. Now, imagine if you were a Muslim who is reading that during Ramadan, because during Ramadan, a pious Muslim is likely to every night read a portion of the Quran until by the 30th night, the last night of Ramadan, he's read the whole thing. So you read this one night. You get to this chapter and you get to verse 29, chapter 48, verse 29. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah and those with him are severe against disbelievers and merciful among themselves. And you think, well, this is the month when I am renewing my commitment to Allah. As Barack Obama said, this is an opportunity to focus on reflection and spiritual growth. OK, so I want to focus on reflection and spiritual growth. So I figure what I need to do is be merciful to other Muslims, because the verse says, merciful among themselves and severe against the disbelievers. And both of those are acts of devotion and piety, renewing one's dedication to Allah or deepening one's dedication to Allah. 
See, the thing is that most Western analysts, when they think about Islam, they're really thinking about Judaism or Christianity, but they don't realize it because they have not taken the trouble to determine exactly how drastically the Islamic worldview differs from that of Judaism and Christianity. Or because they don't take religion seriously in general, they cannot fathom somebody reading a book like the Quran or the Bible for that matter and taking it seriously as marching orders for today. The problem is all too many Muslims do, of course, read the Quran that way. And so when they see that Ramadan is a time of fasting, of prayer, of spiritual reflection, as Obama has reminded us, then they go to the Quran to see what they ought to do. And they see that what they ought to do is to be severe against unbelievers while being merciful to other Muslims and that these are acts of devotion. They also might read, for example, chapter nine, verse 111. Allah has purchased from the believers their lives and their properties, that theirs shall be paradise. They fight in Allah's cause, so they kill and are killed. And so a believer might actually get the impression that it would be a tremendous act of devotion to Allah to kill and in the process be killed. And that this also could be a Ramadan devotion. This is one reason why we see an increase during Ramadan of jihad terror activity. As a matter of fact, the jihad group uh, in Chechnya that publishes the Kafka Center website, uh, it published a few years back an article in which it said, the month of Ramadan in the life of the prophet, that is Muhammad, of course, and the righteous ancestors was a month of forthcoming. The greatest battles during the lifetime of the prophet occurred in this blessed month, the month of jihad, zeal, and enthusiasm. See, in the West, it is enforced upon us an unreality, a, a politically correct fantasy, that jihad is solely a spiritual struggle in, to, to improve the condition of one's soul and does not have to do with uh, warfare and fighting. But when you have a holy book that says, for example, chapter 9, verse 29, fight against those who do not, be who do not believe in Allah nor the last day, do not forbid what was forbidden by Allah and his messenger, and do not acknowledge the religion of the truth, even if they're among the people of the book, until they pay the jizya with willing submission and feel themselves subdued. Well, then you might get the idea if you're reading the book and thinking, well, how can I in increase my devotion to Allah during this Ramadan? You might think, well, one way I can do it is to fight against the people of the book, that is primarily Jews and Christians, until they are subjugated under the rule of the Muslims and paying this tax, the jizya. You might get the idea that when the Quran says in chapter 9, verse 5, when the sacred months have passed, then kill the mushrikun, that is, those who associate partners with Allah, those who worship others alongside Allah. Uh, the Christians are often considered mushrikun, those who commit shirk, the uh, association of partners with Allah, because they worship Jesus as the Son of God. And so kill the mushrikun wherever you find them, and capture them and besiege them and lie in wait for them in each and every ambush. One might think, well, a pious act an act of devotion toward Allah in that case would be for me to lie in wait and besiege and ambush non-believers, those who associate partners with Allah, and to kill them. And that this does not see an act of uh, undifferentiated or uh, unfocused murder and mayhem. It is a pious act, an act of devotion, an act that shows that somebody is serving Allah. The thing that, the, that eludes the West is the fact that there is this, uns, well, the, the problem, I should say, that clouds the minds of people in the West is that there's a core assumption that if something is a religion, it must be telling you to do good things. And the idea of a religion that tells you to do things that are actually, from an objective standpoint, terrible things to do, beheading people, taking sex slaves, uh, beating disobedient women, uh, uh, killing unbelievers solely for the fact of being unbelievers, and so on. And thinking all these to be religious acts, well, that's, these are not really good things. But it, is, it seems to be something that is just too difficult or perhaps too costly from a social standpoint for most Western analysts to accept 
that there could be a religion that actually teaches these things and that therefore when the jihadis do these things they're simply acting in accord with the clear tenets of the quran the holy book of islam and with the teachings and the example of muhammad now see ramadan only intensifies all that it's bad enough throughout the year but during ramadan it is especially intense because if somebody's trying to increase his devotion to allah these are avenues they're not the only ones but they certainly are avenues clearly set out in the quran for how one can deepen one's devotion to allah it is at the expense of unbelievers at the cost of their lives or at the costs of their liberties uh, in various ways so ramadan the month of jihad promises to be a rocky and difficult month as it always is for unbelievers and we can only hope that the death toll is uh, is at its minimum but we can know that those who are killed by pious muslims during ramadan are killed as acts of devotion to allah i'm robert spencer for the glazov gang tonight and please do show your support for the glazov gang or else and the uh, you can go to jamieglazov.com to do that as well as subscribe to the glazov gang youtube channel you won't be sorry thank you very much